my dad used to stand right there and um, he used to just have that dip net and just scoop up all the salmon and just throw it right over the bank there. It was all just an open field there before. Um, now there's all these trees here and um, he used to tell us to go tell aunties and uncles come and get their fish. He didn't sell it, he just gave it away, you know. Everybody had smoked fish. Yeah. Yeah, had fish for supper, chowder, fish chowder. It was just really amazing, the food that we had right from this river. This is a new bridge now, uh, from the old bridge that I remember. The old bridge had a, a great big high, like a V-shape and uh, our families used to, used to crawl up and then they'd jump, they'd swim, swim in there. And I used to wish I could swim. I still, I never learned how to swim. So this is where my dad was from. Uh, my grandfather, my grandpa, and uh, he, his land is, his property was across the bridge, across the river, the, where this bend goes. There's a across, across the river there. My grandfather had had um, a lot of property over that way, and um, that. And um, like the water, we used to we used to go down the beach, pack our laundry down there and do laundry down there, then pack it back home and hang it up on a clothesline. And uh, because here, the drinking water here, it's half fresh and half salt. So we had to go, had to walk up, way up. See where that tall, that first tall tree, that's where the, the river, the, on the other side there. We had to walk up there to get fresh water, packing two buckets of water, and me and my sister would spill half of it before we get home. And then one time we were so tired that we got a stick, and then we got a, some rope, and we thought we'd have the stick on our, on our neck and have, it, have the rope so it would be lighter to carry. But we spilled more water than than anything else. It was, it, it it didn't work. We we thought it would help us, but it didn't. And uh, oh, there's a canoe over here. Good, there's no dogs. So it looks like this is all washed up now too. So this is the river and we used to go down the beach down there. And there's my auntie's house across, the, across there. This, so all those trees weren't there before in 1950. Me and my sister used to get on a canoe and go across on the canoe. Be staying there for a few days and then we'd go back home. And I guess must have been depending on when dad was, was working, I guess. So this is, this is where I grew up, me and my sister and uh, where dad dad is from, this is where his, his father was from, the Tommy family. And beautiful memories, cherished memories here. So I think it used to be little flowers, just like how little Josie is. Um, she just loves her plants and the down the that trail it used to be all clear here there wasn't these trees here and we used, 
we used to go down there and the flowers, these beautiful little flowers would be just washing on the side of, side of the side of the river there. It was so beautiful. And this is my dad's property, my grandpa's property. It goes all the way up. I don't know how many acres up up towards Coxila that way. I forget how many acres there is. That was my grandpa's property. Then my dad inherited that. Um, mostly my knitting mm. with my with my auntie and my cousin Evelyn, mm. my sister Julia and dad. Uh, that's that's so important. The language is um to me is almost lost. Like like the nuns just forbid us to talk and speak our language in school. And that's a whole different story there. Another whole different story of how we were forbidden to speak Hulkamanum. So um, it's coming back. It's it's really very thankful to the the education and teaching of um, especially in the daycare and our our babies are being taught the language and uh, It's so important for them to hear it and keep learning and and keep hearing it at home. My daughter has a tape and she keeps playing that for the great grandbabies. It's, it's, that's the only way and for them to learn it and pronounce it the correct way. Yeah. And uh, our food, it's so important to, to continue having our salmon. But it's so scary too, like pollution in the, the farm, the fish farms is is what it's doing to the wild salmon for them to come back here and be pure and clean. You know, there's something happening there. And there, the octopus, you know, I don't know what, what the pollution would be doing to any of the, the meals that we had in the 1950s that I remember everything that was so delicious and we try to have that that food today it just it, the taste is not the same I always say I guess I'm just getting old it just doesn't taste the same but I guess maybe it's the pollution maybe I don't know um, and the berries we just that was our treat for the summer uh, there's a plant I don't know what the English name of it is. It's, to me, I know, only know it as Alila. And that was our treat. We'd, me and my sister would go looking for it and we'd pick it, put our finger right through the bottom and all the way up like a celery. And just break it open and peel it, peel all the outside and we'd eat that. And uh, that was a treat. And also the salmon berries and uh, the alila, there's some different kind of alila on that salmon berry, and we eat, we'd eat that, peel it, like little red branches on there, and uh, we'd peel it and eat it. And uh, the wild blackberries and the blueberries, and um, like I said, the cra crab apple tree. There was one crab apple tree that was where me and my sister would go sneak down there on the canoe and have our, have our fill of um, crab apples when it was ripe. Take some home and we'd get in trouble for going out on the canoe and going home and bringing it home and said, you're not supposed to go out there by yourself. You know, but that's what we did. Then that, that was our treat that we, um, I remember packing water making open fire in a bath, making hot water and doing our laundry. Yeah. So it's, 
It was all hard work, but we never thought of it as hard work. We just thought of um, things that needed to be done, you know, and we all helped. Yeah, we never complained. I don't know, maybe we did complain now and then, but I don't remember complaining. Because Dad had to go to work and provide for us, and my auntie and my cousin Evelyn and her family, she had two children at that time. So, and uh, I remember when we'd go to town, of course, the dad would say, you gotta get, take a bath and get ready and we're going to town. Then we'd walk down to the corner way down here by the tennis court and wait for the Greyhound bus and we'd go into Victoria. And that was our treat. Go to Chinatown, have Chinese food. And, so oh, that was a real treat then. A lot of it has changed. Like the river bank is not, it's the river is still the same, but it's, uh, there's more like of the, the wood in a, I don't know how that was kept clear, clear and clean. I don't know how that was back in 1950, how this, Stumps are these logs that are in the river. That was never like that. And a lot of it is washing away. Uh, the banks are going down. Um, what needs to be done is to have some big boulders along the river banks so that none of that would wash away in the winter time. That, that's probably a lot, lots of money to do that, to save the Couchin River. Yeah. Couching is a, means so everything, you know, everything, our life here. Kauitsen. It's a, our language is Kauitsen. Um, our life here, our life with the wool. The, they say that way back when the nuns came in, taught, taught our our elders, our ancestors to knit, or how to taught them how to do the work with wool. So that's how it became the couch and knitters. And um, that's still going on today. So it's Kawitin, that's whole, all of this whole area. My home, my dad, my family, my family, my daughter, and my sons, my two sons my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. That's, that's, that's just it, that's all of it, you know. And how I got to be who I am today. And teaching, continue teaching. You know, I've um, had the honor to be asked to come to the Kwamachin High and Kwamachin Elementary. Uh, I got asked to come up here and and brought all of, packed all of my wool up here in my work, everything, showed the students. I even um, kind of scolded one class, I remember. I told them, you know, when I was in school, if I wasn't paying attention, just talking, these two little ones were talking away and not paying attention. I would, if I was mean like what, how I was taught, I'd tell you to stand up and repeat everything that I said. I told these two little students and that, that really, really opened their eyes to, to listen. You know, I didn't mean to be harsh on them, but that, that, that's how I was treated, you know. When someone is talking, you have to listen. So I was really, I went to five different schools in that one day, Cromerton High Elementary, Cooks Isla, Cobble Hill, and Mill Bay, all in one day. I was asked to do that. So Sounds like a lot. <laughs> it was a lot, but it was, it was sharing, sharing the teachings and uh, the work. Yeah, tell them, you can do it. You can say, don't say you can't do it. You can do it. So a lot of our families here still, still are knitting. You know, it's it's their livelihood. The the 
things that they, they make, even if it's just a toque or a sock, it's a few dollars for, for their loaf of bread and milk. Yeah. My wish is that we could have a store that, where everybody could go and just bring all their knitting and I'll have their name on there and their price on there and they could, consignment, they, there's no, no fee. They get their full price, what they want, what they ask for. That's my wish one day. That, that would be not having to go to a store and just get half of what they, mm -hmm. their, their hard work. So that's couching. Yeah. It's couching. That's the knitters, the providers, the fishermen, the fishermen that work and have their, and later on when the salmon start coming, there'll be our family there. The men would be all there on the bridge there and with their spears. And they, they see salmon coming and they, they have the talent to know when to th throw their spear and really hit that salmon and pull it up from that string, pull it back up. That's the talent that a lot of the young men have grown, learned how to do. And uh, what dad did was uh, the dip net. And he made his own dip net. He didn't go buy it. He made his own. The talent of tying that webbing and how he'd make that knot so that knot's not going to be slipping. It just, it was amazing to see that. It was amazing. I still thank my uncle for for feeding us, going out fishing, Couching Bay. There again is Cowichan, Couching Bay. <laughs>